Good morning. This is Pastor Colleen Weirman, and I'm here with another daily devotion for Monday, February 8th, 2021. And we are finishing up the book by Pastor Rick Warren, 40 Days of Community. And then we're going to move on to the Ignatius Workout for Lent by T Tim Muldoon. Okay, so we will do that in three days because today is day 37 out of the 40 days and we're still in our theme. We're created to worship together by preparing for worship. Okay, so our reading comes from the Old Testament, 2 Chronicles 12 verse 14. Rehoboam did evil because he did not prepare his heart to seek the Lord. Okay, so this is all about preparing yourself for worship. The writers write, when we worship with an unprepared heart, we sin. God doesn't expect our corporate worship to be perfect. That means the gathered body of believers. But he does expect it to be focused, with each of us arriving for the service with a prepared heart and uncluttered mind. In this corporate offering to God, we're to enter his presence, the presence of a holy being, the one and only true God, with thanksgiving. And that comes from Psalm 95, 2. Our corporate worship is really an extension of our daily walk with God, where our attitudes and actions already serve to worship our Creator. Our love for each other is another form of worship that becomes a critical element in our ability to join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God. That's from Romans 15, 5 through 6. If we have failed to apply the one another lessons we've been studying for the past six weeks, we may hinder our congregation's ability to praise God in a unified voice. Interesting. <laughs> we must cleanse ourselves of anything that dampens our fellowship with God. The psalmist declared, Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy presence? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They alone may enter God's presence and worship the God of Israel. Psalm 24, 3-4. Our hands and hearts have been made pure through the death and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is only through him that our worship is acceptable to God. Therefore, Jesus, or through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess Jesus' name. So preparing for worship means to, one, slow down and breathe. <laughs> Turn away from ourselves and begin meditating on what God has done for us. So the simple way of doing that, and I know if you're getting kids ready to go to worship, it can be hard because they're loud and they're screaming and yelling. They don't want to get in the car seat and all of that. You could just constantly be saying a favorite scripture in your mind. You could be singing a favorite praise song in your mind. You're preparing your heart for worship. Um, Disharmony with the congregation can also dampen corporate worship. So if you've got a beef, if you're with someone at um, the church that you attend, um, it's probably best to um, meet with them and discuss it before your next corporate worship service. If you enter your place of worship, Matthew 5.23 says, about and about to make an offering, you suddenly remember the grudge a friend has against you. Abandon your offering, leave immediately, go to this friend and make things right. Then and only then come back and work things out with God. How quickly would broken relationships within the church be restored if we all agreed not to have to not have services each weekend until we were all right with one another? <laughs> we probably wouldn't have service. <laughs> But if we were to follow Matthew 5, 23, if you have a grudge against someone, go talk to them. And if you can't talk to them, because sometimes it might be the pastor that you have an issue with. And in the Methodist church, we have, and I've mentioned this before, we have like a human relations arm of the church. So you can go to that person who's in charge of that and talk with them. And then they'll probably um, watch the, the committee that they're on and that they're heading. will watch to see if this is, in, in fact, something the pastor does all the time then they'll need to address it with the pastor. If it's something that they don't see, it might just be something um, the individual might be having an issue with, so they might, you know, uh, ask if the pastor will meet with that person and another person. So, and pastors, listen to your people. Okay? Once we've examined our hearts, we prepare for corporate worship by telling God these three things when we enter the sanctuary for service. So these three things you can tell God. 
I'm coming to focus on you, God, not anything else. Help me clear my mind and worship with you with an undivided heart. Number two, I'm coming to give you, not I'm coming to give to you, not to receive. I desire to seek your face and not your hand. I have no agenda except to minister to you, my Lord. Psalm 41. A lot of times we want something out of worship. We want a good sermon. We want good music. We want um, to see our kid up there for children's message, whatever it is. I'm coming to give to you, not to receive. Worship is all about giving to the one who deserves to be worshipped, and that is God. And number three, I'm, com I'm coming to offer my praise and to use my heart, my voice, and my hands to worship you. I choose to focus on your goodness and mercy and not human error or methodology. Obviously, he's not a Methodist. <laughs> Do you know how Methodists got their name? They were in class classes or Bible studies, and they were very methodical in their Bible studies. So because they were so methodical, they had a, they had a way that they studied the Bible. They were called Methodical Methodists. So that's how we got our name. Um, so I think what he means here is by not, you know, thinking we have to do everything right, stand and sit, do whatever. You know, if we mess up, that's okay as long as we're in the spirit of God and praising God and coming to worship to praise God, not to get something, to bring something, and pure heart, open mind. First to remember, who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure. Psalm 24, 3 for 4. So what can you do to prepare yourself for corporate worship for this weekend coming up? God's invitation to come to him in worship is an immeasurable privilege. May we never take it for granted. When we worship with an unprepared heart, we sin. That is a point to ponder. So we definitely want to prepare our hearts, and it's as simple as I'm here to um, come to you with an open heart, open mind, help me to get rid of all this negativity and all the things that I'm worrying about. And then you can pray to God to say, um, I'm here to to praise you and to lift up your name and to focus on your goodness. I'm not here to get anything. I'm here to give to you um, my body as a living sacrifice. So I'm here to hear what you have to say, and I'm here to offer everything I have to you. So that is um, today's devotional. Everybody's sleeping in from the Super Bowl game last night. We have three more days, day 38. We, we are created to worship together by praying together, and we're created to worship together by giving our tithes and offerings, and we're created to pr uh, worship together. Our last one is, if I can find it, celebrating together. Okay, so a few more days of this, and then we will be on to um, the Ignatius Workout, Ignatian Workout for Lent by Tim Muldoon. Again, this is based on um, Ignatia of Loyola, who was a Spanish priest who was a co-founder of the Jesuit arm of the denomination, the Catholic denomination. There's not Catholic words in here and because I don't know them, so I wouldn't be able to understand it. So um, this is basically starts, it's based off of um, Ignatius of Loyola's spiritual exercises. And so it starts with the scripture, talks about the devotion, and then it goes into a prayer and an action we can take each week. So this will be fun. It's tiny, so if you have a hard time seeing, get your bifocals out or your magnifying glass. The Ignatian Workout for Lent by Tim Muldoon. So that's what we'll start in three more days. Until then, have a wonderful Monday. Enjoy your day and be thankful you're up and breathing, and God has given you another day to um, live for him. Have a good day. Bye-bye.